Was Chloe made up for the series? Did Lucifer kill Amanadiel in the original comics and never return to hell? Hi, I'm Dylan, and today we expose 10 things that were rewritten for the series. If you're not a big fan of the original comics and the series was your first encounter with Lucifer, this video will be a hell of a ride for you. Pun unintended. Chloe didn't exist in the comics? It's said that Lucifer is a very loose adaptation of the DC comic series written by Neil Gaiman, but who would have thought that the only similarities between the original and the show would be the characters' names and Lucifer's daddy issues? Speaking of the characters, most of them never even existed in the graphic novel. Chloe Decker, the LAPD detective that Lucifer is so obsessed with helping in the show, was never a central character in the comics. In fact, she was created by writers specifically for the series. Lucifer is fascinated by her resistance to his devilish powers, which set the foundation for their romantic storyline the audience is so hooked on. By contrast, in the comics, Lucifer has multiple lovers such as goddesses and badass demons. The Lord of Hell stays true to his nature and feels no remorse or love toward any particular human. Okay, a list of everyone you slept with in the last eight weeks. Right, you'll need a much bigger notepad. Keep watching the video to hear more about this initial storyline. Nobody looks like they're comic book characters. Now, we cannot miss an opportunity to dive into the visual part of the series. You might be surprised to hear that Neil Gaiman, the writer of the graphic novel, actually modeled Lucifer after the most influential musician of the 20th century, David Bowie. Yep, you heard that right. Lucifer was meant to have blonde locks, chiseled facial features, and blue eyes to correspond with his image as an archangel. I bet even Netflix's budget cannot afford that much CGI to create the look on Tom Ellis. Unlike her bestie, the demon Mazikeen's looks are spot on. In the series, Maze retained her black hair and frightening side of her face that is mutilated and scarred. What about a Manny deal? Well, there are way more similarities between Henry Cavill's Witcher and the comics version of a Manny deal than with the Amanda deal on the show. Safe to say, the casting directors chose acting talent over the sketches in the DC novel, and we stand. On top of that, the writers took almost nothing from the comics, including a Manny deal storyline. Speaking of which, Amanda Deal's original fate was way too grim. Firstly, Amanda Deal is described as one of the most powerful angels, but not a very gifted one intellectually. He's more of a brute, driven against Lucifer by his loyalty to God. That's why in the comics, the relationship between Amanda Deal and Lucifer takes a different turn. He hates Lucifer, but more than that, he's determined to destroy him in the name of God. There's no way he would side with the Lord of Hell, assist him, and betray his holy obligations. In the DC Universe, instead of becoming a father to a half-angel, as it happened in Season 3, Amanadiel enters Hell to fight Lucifer. No matter what he does, he can never outsmart the devil and eventually loses his life to him. No love story with Linda, no companionship with Lucifer, no weepy moments of losing his wings, and not even nearly becoming a dad. None of it was in the novel! Why did Lucifer leave Hell? In the series, the narrative says that Lucifer made an independent decision to switch from Hell to the world of mortals because he was bored, which was not the case in the novel. In the original, Lucifer felt it was unfair that he had to take responsibility for ruling Hell just because he once rebelled. He was also tired of people blaming him for their sins. Why do they blame me for all their little failings? They use my name as if I spent my entire day sitting on their shoulders, forcing them to commit acts they would otherwise find repulsive. The devil made me do it. I've never made any one of them do anything. Never. They live their own tiny lives. I do not live their lives for them. Yet it was an outside influence that pushed him to quit. Dream, who's an older than the gods powerful being, embarrassed Lucifer by saying that every resident in hell is merely there dreaming of heaven. The words angered and offended Lucifer, and encouraged him to resign from his position. Screw altruism! Lucifer had none of it! In both universes, Lucifer had enough of hell and left to start a new life in the heart of debauchery, Los Angeles. After that, the novel and the script parted ways. According to the comics, Lucifer's purpose in life was determined in the pilot after his female friend was shot dead in front of the Lux Club. That was a point when the whole novel turned into an adventurous crime detective show. Lucifer stepped on his path of justice settler, punishing bad guys while falling in love with his partner, Detective Decker. In the original text, Lucifer had none of that altruism in him. Your danger to yourself or others. How's that? Great. Lovely. He was given a task by God. Should he complete the task, he can ask for any reward of his choice. 
It appears that the fallen angel was doing dirty work for heaven while exploring his morbid curiosity toward humans. Doesn't seem similar at all. I bet the screenwriters thought that pure evil would not attract as many viewers and that the audience would long for a love story. The only thing is that in the comics, there was a different love story. Maze and Lucifer's Affair Since in the series, the main focus falls on the development of Chloe and Lucifer's relationship, Maze plays the role of a bestie, an ally, or simply a drinking companion. Are you still upset about me trying to betray you and kill you? It was a month ago. No, of course not. What do you think I am, human? But in the original writing, the two crossed the line of friendship and started off as lovers. At some point, Lucifer leaves the world for his adventures and Maze scars his face. She tells him if he heals, he would be a coward. So Lucifer lives up to her expectations and leaves it as is. Sociopath in the comics? Are you wondering if it's the same Lucifer from the DC Universe or if the writers just borrowed the title? To answer that, let's break down his personality in both. The comics portray Lucifer as someone close to a sociopath, with no regard for human life. He is selfish, narcissistic, and vindictive. And most importantly, Lucifer sees no need to change. Thus, there were no appointments with a therapist in the comics. The show portrays Lucifer as an anti-hero, mischievous, emotional, and even sympathetic toward human suffering. Satan has feelings and experiences humanity in a way he wasn't accustomed to before. The pilot starts the story with a line. Suddenly, Lucifer starts to wonder if there's hope for his soul. Many fans voiced their dislike for the character and how the showrunners made him immature and an inconsistent drama queen. And here's why. In the comics, Lucifer is cold, reticent, and it would take a lot of effort to jolt him out of his composure. He's been ruling hell for billions of years. There's nothing you can impress or anger him with. I think your research may have been a little... <laughs> Inadequate. Remember the time Lucifer lost his wings? In the DC comics, he took them back by blood. Lucifer's a badass like no other. He transcends into a different realm, outsmarts demons, and slays gods to get them back. Unlike in the series where he got his wings handed back to him just like that. Can that be explained by his lack of superpowers in the show? Oh wait, you thought he was omnipotent in the show? Wait until you hear about his original abilities. Unlike his blueprint character, TV Lucifer struggles to get himself out of trouble most of the time. He did shelter Chloe from the bullet rain, but he still got his ass kicked by some lady and got himself locked in the fridge. Like, how do you guys not think that through? It seems like he's closer to being human in the series. What's the coolest thing he can do? Fly? Extract your guilty pleasure? Flip a coin? Never get drunk? I mean, the last one is a gem, but still. In the series, the showrunners indulge us in an epic fight every now and then. But the actual magnitude of the devil is second to none in the comics. Just check out the list of superheroes the fallen angel has. There's nothing he can't do. Not only can he control time, matter, souls, and minds, he can even warp reality. He is the devil for God's sake. Hell, home sweet home. Another particular detail that didn't sit well with the writers is his relationship with Hell. After the Lord of the Damned left his throne, Hell slowly began disintegrating without its ruler. We see how in the series, God is begging Lucifer to return. The writers spend four seasons trying to get him back home. Eventually, the devil's duties put him at a crossroads, making him choose between his love interest Chloe and his niche as the Lord of the Damned. In the comics, though, Hell's doing just fine without its devil. And that's because in the novel, God thought that outcome through way before it ever happened. The creator convinced two angels to come and negotiate Lucifer's return, which appeared to be his way of tricking them into ruling the kingdom. Lucifer does not feel homesick after his retirement. Moreover, he creates his own reality. Let's talk more about that. Lucifer's ending revealed? We are still patiently expecting season 5, but for now, we're left wondering what will happen after Lucifer goes back to preside in hell. In the Lucifer spin-off series created by Mike Carey, such an outcome was not even an option. The fallen angel decided to explore the possibility of creating his own universe. Using his superpowers, Lucifer created his own realm and tried to reenact the story of Adam and Eve. Not only that, he also aimed to avoid the mistakes that God made in his version. God made another effort to unite with his son and offered to merge their beings together to finally understand each other. But Lucifer rejected that idea and left the creation to explore the undefined void beyond. 
Now, which detail surprised you the most? Which storyline do you prefer? Lucifer from the original comics or in the Altered TV series? Let us know in the comments below, and as always, stay awesome!